here on location at the Illinois State Police Headquarters, District 11 in beautiful Collinsville, Illinois. And we know that the Illinois State Police have a big responsibility in keeping our community safe. But guess what? They are also keeping our youth engaged in the Team Illinois Youth Police Camp. Yes, hi, I'm here with Trooper Dye of the Illinois State Police. And Trooper Dye, can you tell me a little bit about what can we expect to happen at the camp this year? Well, it's a week-long residency program, um, including youth in between the ages of 13 to 17. We have both males and females. We usually anticipate around 80 to 100 kids. Uh, it's a military style, like boot camp. Uh, some of the kids are struggling to conform to authority, and some of the kids eventually want to be police officers or join the United States military. Okay, and so, so what are some of the ways that you help the teens conform as far as the activities that they will be doing at the camp? We have several classroom exercises, several guest speakers that talk on a variety of topics, everything from gangs, dr uh, drugs, uh, internet safety, uh, cyberbullying, because a lot of our youth are dealing with being bullied online. So we go over how to protect themselves online. Uh, we have somebody from a bank come speak to them about how to save money. We have somebody from the health department come speak to them, take them on several field trips, and we actually have one-on-one -on -one time with them during our uh, counselor sessions near the end of the evening each night. Okay, and how long have you been involved with the camp? This is year 10. Uh, we've had people go on to get federal jobs. We've had several college graduates. We've had several people join the military. It's not easy. The main thing that the uh, kids do not like about the camp that the parents love or guardians love is that there are no electronic devices allowed for the whole time, the uh, five or six nights that they're there. We have a male dormitory as well as a female dormitory. We have uh, female supervision uh, from officers and male supervision from officers. So they'll be, uh, it's a highly structured environment. Okay, well thank you so much for joining us today and giving us that information. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay. I'm here with Sergeant Jennings. Sergeant Jennings, tell me about your role in the camp and what have you been doing with the camp? Teams? Yes, uh, I, uh, for the last several years, probably close to 10 years, uh, I serve as a counselor for the camp. And so I uh, normally spend a lot of time, uh, mainly with the young men that are at the camp. But as a counselor, you have maybe eight to 12 kids that are in your squad, mm -hmm. and you're responsible for basically getting to know them during that week and uh, hopefully expanding that relationship beyond that one week uh, with the youth that are there. Okay. Uh, and so when you are expanding that relationship, where does that go or where does that take the team from there as far as building up their confidence and having that relationship with the Illinois State Police? Uh, yes, uh, several, uh, about maybe two or three years ago, there was one particular uh, cadet that we were uh, able to uh, build that relationship. Now, I mean, hundreds of kids have been through this camp. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't, we're not able to keep up with a lot of them, but there are a few that we are. And one of the few that we, are, that we were, uh, about two or three years ago, um, he and I connected and I was able, went to a couple of his track meets and uh, went out to eat, eat lunch with them. And, then the mother or father will end up calling you to say, hey, you might want to come over and talk to Cadet X or he's having problems or, you know, there are some issues at school and that's what a relationship is built at. Okay, and nothing like having that extra support system for the team. So that's wonderful. That yes, absolutely awesome. That. Okay, mm -hmm. well, thank you so much. You're welcome. I have Special Agent Riley here, and he is known as the official drill sergeant. <laughs> All right, well, tell me about some of the drills that the youth will be doing in camp this year. Well, my responsibility is just maintain uh, order and conduct with the cadets throughout the week. Because there's on the average about 50 to 60 cadets, we have to make sure that they all are moving from one station to the next in an orderly fashion. In order to do that, we have to set a tone of discipline and conduct. So they all have the same rules about how to stand, uh, how to only move when told to move, uh, what to do in those situations when they're told to do something, just basically to respond to it. A lot of the kids that we come across are kind of not used to uh, discipline as a unit, as a group, and they think that they can kind of like slide and get away with things individually. So we correct them all as a group just to make sure they understand that the mission is 
uh, that we need to get everything done the way we need it to get done because and there's a reason behind it which is most importantly safety but we're also trying to instill and teach them teamwork as well about it so it's a good experience for them because a lot of them aren't used to this military law enforcement style of leadership so it's an adjustment period for them all the while understand they have to work together as a team in order to get the, the mission accomplished okay and that is what it's about getting the mission accomplished absolutely and so in regards to the teams that attend the camp what is the percentage of success rate in regards to them conforming to the drills uh, I would say, if I had to estimate, close to about maybe 98% will conform. Some initially don't conform because they're not used to structure. Some don't conform initially because they don't, they want to resist the, they want to resist the discipline. They want to resist the structure. They want to resist authority. And a lot of them are used to that in their, you know, their normal everyday lives. So with those, we have to try to work with them in a way that they understand that it's about the mission. It's about what we need to collectively accomplish as a group and for the most part they get it some of them initially don't like it but initially by the end of the week they all get it and they all really are satisfied and feel like they're better because of the way that we maintain them and discipline throughout the week at the camp okay all right and how long have you been with the camp i worked the camp for about six years now okay all right then well thank you so much for your time today. thank you thank you okay i'm here with sandy voitis and I tell you, Sandy has played such an integral part in the camp, even from the beginning of the camp. So Sandy, can you explain to me how the camp began and you know, where is it taken off from then until now? Sure, uh, we started out rather small. We only had 30 cadets at the, at the beginning because it was uh, a Team Illinois Youth Police Camp. Uh, at the time, a governor um, had different districts within the state that they called it a grant, it was a grant funded by a grant in the Team Illinois. Um, they wanted a community within the district that maybe needed the youth, needed some help, some guidance, and would benefit from our camp. So at the beginning, the camp was held, or it was primarily geared towards students in Madison, Venice area. And then um, after the grant ran out, um, we were completely funded by donations from organizations and businesses. Um, within the community that help fund our camp now. And so we've grown larger and larger. Um, we have moved from the Granite City area where we started mm -hmm. the camp. Um, we used to have it at the Army Depot station there. And now we, we moved to the Alton Mental Health Hospital. Since it is all donations, we needed to go where a lot of places were free or, mm -hmm. or limited funding. So um, then we went to um, Springfield Four year and then now we're at Principia for the last four years, I think. Wow, so hey, a lot of traveling and a lot of locations. Correct. And can you also tell me what other agencies have been involved with supporting the camp? Um, it varies year to year. We have different agencies. Some are consistent. We have Collinsville Police Department, East St. Louis Police Department, um, Shiloh Police Department, St. Clair County, Madison County, Granite City, Alton, uh, Edwardsville Police Department, Glen Carbon Police Department. We even, uh, the year before last, we had uh, Missouri State Highway Patrol came over because they wanted to model, they wanted to start a camp in Missouri mm -hmm. and they wanted to model their camp after ours. So we had a Missouri State Highway Patrol uh, and came over to help with our camp. Okay, all right. And thank you so much for creating this beautiful backdrop here. And can you tell me about some of the different things that these pictures represent in regards to the activities of the camp. I see you have here like group pictures from 2000, the 2004 to 2018. Actually 2006 uh -huh. is when it started. That was when we were in Granite City. As you can see the number of youth from 2006 to 2018, how we've grown as far as counselor and, and youth wide. Um, and the other pictures here are uh, just some of the activities we do during the week. We have um, a safety day where we have our helicopter come in, uh, the uh, fire department, canine, uh, motorcycles, SWAT. Uh, we take them down on the track and have them drive a golf cart uh, for distracted driving to see if they can text mm -hmm. and drive at the same time to show mm -hmm. them how difficult and how they shouldn't be doing that. Um, 
And we do other fun things too with them. We have a fishing derby where they can earn prizes. Um, they have to uh, pay attention to a lot of the classroom activities during the week because we offer a test um, where we have a valedictorian and salutatorian at mm -hmm. the graduation. And we have um, Camp Joy is a Boy Scout camp that we have and they go there and they do learn a lot of team building activities. Mm -hmm. They can canoe, canoe um, they can uh, do the zip line. There's a lot of activities that they, they do there as well. Um, those are some of the fun activities. We also uh, teach them uh, life lessons too, um, possibly how to dress for an interview, mm -hmm. how to uh, save money, money skills, um, how they um, gain some drugs, um, mm -hmm. uh, not being safe on the internet as far as pictures and things, information that they put out there. Yes, yes, and that's so important and everything that you have mentioned, I'm quite sure they can take those skills and the experience and apply it to their everyday life. And before uh, we finish speaking here, uh, Carrie was not able to be here today and Carrie is a wonderful lady. And so what part did Carrie play in the um, setting up of the camp? Oh, Carrie, uh, her title here at the State Police was a community liaison, so she was the person that they reached out to help start this camp. So I just joined in with her to, to assist her and help her from the beginning. But uh, she was the one that actually, her and um, Master Sergeant Merrifield were the, the two that started the camp. Okay, well, we just want to say hats off to the founders, and we appreciate them for doing such a good job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you with Cynthia Holton. And Cynthia, I know you had went into the camp and you had started out as a cadet mm -hmm. and then you ended up being a mentor. Yeah. Can you share that experience with me? Um, my first go around, I had volunteered to go to camp. Um, my best friend's mom had worked in the prison in Alton and she had found out that way she could be a great experience for you to go and I was, I was really iffy about it because I was saying I'm a kid, like I don't want to go leave my, because I think take your phone, they take everything. <laughs> but, and then we got there like, they, you made put your bags to the side and they had the dog sniff and like it was like crazy at first because like it wasn't anything I was used to but as time went on and as the camp went on I created great friendships with a lot of people and experienced a lot of different things um hearing stories from these kids is amazing too just what they have gone through and how they're like overcoming it uh the trips that we got to go on I, I enjoyed the drill a lot um I actually got to be one of the five or six I can't remember that led down to um, graduation my first go around, which was pretty awesome because he only selected a few and I was one of them because I, I wrote like a two page thing just to hope that I got it. And so my second go around when I was called back as a mentor because they only called back a select few mm -hmm. and me and my best friend were actually both called back to be mentors, which was a great experience because we got to do a little bit more than be a cadet. Um, we got a little more leniency and be able to like understand the kids a lot more and like tell them our experiences and what it did for us even though like we were there for different reasons. It still didn't matter because only, I mean, whatever helps, helps in that sense. Um, and the same thing, the activities we did. And the people there, they gave me a lot of self-confidence because I'm an athlete and I played basketball and golf throughout um, high school and I played in college as well. Okay. And all these, like, none of the girls wanted to play basketball. There was like probably one other girl that wanted to play. And uh, we went to the sports box and we played it. And all the guys were like, beating up on me and stuff like that, just because like, being <laughs> tough, which is fine, like, I like that stuff, because I like to play rough anyway, but they gave me the confidence, even when I was knocked down, like, just to build my self-esteem up, so that was really great, and then I learned a lot of respect, um, just because being a kid, like, you just want to do whatever, mm -hmm. but I learned a lot of respect, and that's when I fell in love with wanting to be a police officer, so, yeah. Okay, well, that's awesome. Well, tell me this, if there is a teen out there that's wanting to come to camp, but not sure, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? the advantages of attending the camp for? I would tell them the people you meet, the relationships that you create, the experience, and probably just everything that you get out of it, like the activities you get to do. Yeah, you have to do PT, but I mean, you're getting physical exercise, so that's not that big of a deal. <laughs> um, and it teaches you respect, and it shows you how it is, what it is to be responsible, and to keep your life on the right path. Oh, yeah. Well, sound like your story is a success story. It is. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia. Yes. Okay, I'm here with Counselor Jamie Brownworth, 
and she's going to share with me some of her experiences with the youth at the camp. So what's been going on with the youth and your interaction with them and what do we do with them? Yeah. Or you know, we do so many different activities with the kids while they're there. They get so many different levels of structure. So we have, you know, our drill and our fitness that they in, um, go through, and then they also have classroom activities where they're learning. And we also have fun activities for them, like, you know, uh, kickball and swimming and just different activities that they can actually have fun at. So there's a lot of different things that we offer at through the camp. Okay, and in regards to the youth that you have to counsel, what have been some of the most challenging experiences that you've had to deal with? Well, I mean, we're dealing with some youth that come from all different backgrounds. And we've had some kids that, you know, are not in shape and they have they really struggle with the fitness aspect of it. And of course we do it in the summer when it's hot. So of course it makes it even tougher on them to be doing all the, the running and, and just the physical activities that we do with them. So that is some struggles for some kids. Uh, there's other kids that come there with some personal you know, baggage that they're brought from at home. It makes it difficult to try and connect with them sometimes because of their own personal experiences. So some, some of those kids are the ones that I try to connect with more or try to talk to more, not necessarily in the more structured settings like drill, but like when we're having the fun activities where we can go and actually talk with them like a person instead of like a drill sergeant and try and connect with them and find out what's really bothering them or, or why they're not um, as involved as some other kids are. And a lot of times it's because of something that has affected them in their past or at home or something that they're dealing with that we're not aware of. And can you also tell me, in regards to your being a counselor, what do you think that it's most important for the students to understand the youth to understand when they come to the camp? I think one of the most important things for the youth is, you know, when they get there, they're totally in shock when we, when we go out and we approach them and it's like a military setting. Mm -hmm. And there are most of them, unless they've been there, are like, this is not what I signed up for. They're thinking they're going to some sort of a camp. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times some of these kids think we're just mean, basically, we're just being <laughs> mean to them. But the kids, you know, what we try to teach them through the course of the week is that there's a reason why we're acting that way and we're trying to instill some discipline in them so that way they have paths in their future and they have different uh, you know avenues for them that they know that you have to have discipline to succeed in life and you have to be motivated and you have to work hard and that's what we're trying to teach them so it's not about being mean it's just about teaching them how to be good people and how to be hard-working successful individuals Yes, and so how long have you been involved with the camp? Um, I think I've done it eight years now, since 2010 was the first year I did it. Okay, well I'm quite sure you've impacted a lot of lives. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. Oh, you're morning. very welcome. You're very welcome. Mr. Sergeant Link, tell me about your role in the Youth Illinois Teen Police Camp. My role is generally that of a, of a drill sergeant. You know, I'm there to make sure when they're in formation that they're not moving, that they're, they're learning the drill movements, you know, they're, they know how to stand at attention, they know how to stand at ease. Uh, you know, it's, it's that role of the drill sergeant. Okay, and in regards to the drills, what are some of the activities that the youth are involved in? Well, when it comes to drill, we go over for just basic formation, squats formation, uh, standing at attention, standing at ease. Uh, we also uh, go over marching marching cadences and stuff like that. We teach them how to line up for uh, physical fitness. We teach them how to line up to go into the cafeteria to get their food and that stuff. Just to make sure uh, everything stays well oiled when you know dealing with 70 uh, youth, sometimes <laughs> it gets out of hand a little bit. So we try to keep everything moving along so that they can partake in all the activities. Yes, and in regards to the youth being disciplined, what is one of the biggest and the most concerns that uh, the youth are dealing with today? Uh, Concerns today, sometimes I think it, it, it's just lack of interaction between you know humans. Uh, with the cell phones and the electronics and everything, a lot of their communication, I feel, is just through text. And it's just a different environment. When they come to the youth camp, they don't get any cell phones. You know, it's everything is between uh, you know the officers that are there and the youth. So I think uh, one of the big things is just getting them away uh, from that aspect of having access to everything all the time, and now you just have to listen to what's being told to you by uh, somebody in an authoritative position. Yes, and so that way they can be more focused. Yes, exactly. Uh, we do keep them focused 
Uh, you know, it, it's amazing though, and anybody that's been in the military will tell you, just a simple uh, back to standing at attention. You know, it's hard for these kids uh, to get it through their head, and if, if anybody, just to stand there without moving your eyes, without looking around, you know, without scratching your nose, it's just trying to teach self-discipline to them. Yes, and is there anything else that you would like to share with us about the camp and the importance of having the camp? Um, I, I think the camp's very important. It, it, it opens the eyes to a lot of, uh, I think, youth in the area, you know, to that military aspect. I, I believe some of them walk away with the camp, you know, maybe wanting to, to join the military or join law enforcement. But uh, the aspect of self-discipline, uh, I always try to drive that home to them, you know, without the self-discipline, it's hard to have self-respect. And without self-respect, you know, if you can't respect yourself, how can I expect you to respect anybody else? So it, it comes down to that, you know, I think the self-discipline leads to self-respect, which also leads to respecting others. And I think ultimately, uh, that's the goal of everybody, you know, to, to, to respect others for what they do, who they are, everything like that. Yes, okay, great. Okay, and also in regards to completing an application for the camp, the camp is going to be held July 15th through 21st, 2018. It's going to be held at Principia College. And for more information, you can call area code 618-346-3524. Once again, 618-346-3524. We'll, we'll see, see you, you at camp. camp.